there, I'm Danielle. Welcome back to Charlotte's Web. Uh, we are starting chapter 10. Last time, Charlotte had some sort of plan that she was going to save Wilbur's life. We also found out that uh, sheep are jerks. Uh, so it should be an interesting read today. Uh, so let's start with chapter 10, An Explosion. Day after day, the spider waited, head down, for an idea to come to her. Hour by hour, she sat motionless, deep in thought. Having promised Wilbur that she would save his life, she was determined to keep her promise. Charlotte was naturally patient. She knew from experience that if she waited long enough, a fly would come to her web, and she felt sure that if she thought long enough about Wilbur's problem, an idea would come to mind. Finally, one morning towards the middle of the July, the idea came. Why, how perfectly simple, she said to herself. The way to save Wilbur's life is to play a trick on Zuckerman. If I can fool a bug, thought Charlotte, I can surely fool a man. People are not as smart as bugs. <laughs> Wilbur walked out into his yard just at that moment. What are you thinking about, Charlotte? he asked. I was just thinking, said the spider, that people are very gullible. What does gullible mean? Easy to fool, said Charlotte. That's a mercy, replied Wilbur, and he lay his head in the shade of his fence and went fast asleep. The spider, however, stayed wide awake, gazing affectionately at him and making plans for his future. Summer was half gone. She, didn't, she knew she didn't have much time. That morning, just as Wilbur fell asleep, Avery Arbel wandered into the Zuckerman's front yard, followed by Fern. Avery carried a live frog in his hand. Fern had a crown of daisies in her hair. The children ran for the kitchen. Just in time for a piece of blueberry pie, said Mrs. Eckerman. Look at my frog, said Avery, placing the frog on the drain board and holding out his hand for pie. Take that thing out of here, said Mrs. Eckerman. He's hot, said Fern. He's almost dead, that frog. He is not, said Avery. He lets me scratch him between the eyes. The frog jumped and landed in Mrs. Zuckerman's dishpan, full of soapy water. You're getting your pie on you, said Fern. Can I look for eggs in the hen house, Aunt, Aunt Edith? Aunt Edith? Run outdoors, both of you, and don't bother the hens. It's getting all over everything, shouted Fern. His pie is all over his front. Come on, frog, said Avery. He scooped up his frog. The frog kicked, splashing soapy water onto the blueberry, blueberry pie. Another crisis, groaned Fern. Let's swing in the swing, said Avery. The children ran to the barn. Mr. Zuckerman had the best swing in the country. It was a single long piece of heavy rope tied to the beam over the north doorway. At the bottom end, at the bottom end of the rope was a fat knot to sit on. It was arranged so that you could swing without being pushed. You climbed a ladder to the hayloft, then holding the rope, you stood at the edge and looked down and were scared and dizzy. Then you straddled the knot so that it acted as a seat. When you got up all your nerve, took a deep breath, then jumped. For a second, you seemed to be falling to the barn floor far below, but then suddenly the rope would begin to catch you and you would sail through the barn door going a mile a minute with the wind whistling in your eyes and ears and hair. Then you would zoom upward into the sky and look up at the clouds and the rope would twist, and you would twist and turn with the rope. Then you would drop down, down, down out of the sky and come sailing back into the barn, almost into the hayloft. Then sail out again, not quite so far this time. Then in again, not quite so high. Then out again, then in again, then out, then in. And then you'd jump off and fall down and let somebody else try it. Mothers for miles around, worried about Zuckerman's swing. They feared some child would fall off, but no child ever did. Children almost always hang on to things tighter than their parents think they will. Avery put the frog in his pocket and climbed to the hayloft. Last time I swung in this swing, I almost crashed into the barn swallow, he yelled. Take that frog out, ordered Fern. Avery straddled the rope and jumped. He sailed out through the door, frog and all, and into the sky, frog and all. Then he sailed back into the barn. Your tongue is purple, screamed Fern. So is yours, cried Avery, sailing out again with the frog. I have hay inside my dress. It itches, called Fern. We'll scratch it, yelled Avery as he sailed back. It's my turn, said Fern. Jump off. 
Fern's got the itch, sang Avery. When he jumped off, he threw the swing up into his sister. She shut her eyes and jumped. She felt the dizzy drop, then the supporting lift of the swing. When she opened her eyes, she was looking up into the blue sky and was about to fly back through the door. They took turns for an hour. When the children grew tired of swinging, they went down to the pasture and picked wild raspberries and ate them. Their tongues turned from purple to red. Fern bit into a raspberry that had a bad tasting bug inside it and got discouraged. Avery found an empty candy box and put his frog in it. The frog seemed tired after his morning in the swing. <laughs> well, no wonder. The children walked slowly up into, towards the barn. They too were tired and hardly had the energy to walk. I'll show you the picture of the swing in the barn. Very cool. <laughs> Let's build a tree house, suggested Avery. I want to live in a tree with my frog. I'm going to visit Wilbur, Fern announced. They climbed the fence into the lane and walked lazily towards the pig pen. Wilbur heard them coming and got up. Avery noticed the spider web and coming closer, he saw Charlotte. Hey, look at that big spider, he said. It's tre tremendous. <laughs> it's tremendous. Leave it alone, commanded Fern. You've got a frog, isn't that enough? That's a fine spider and I'm going to capture it, said Avery. He took the cover off the candy box. Then he picked up a stick. I'm going to knock that old spider into this box, he said. Wilbur's heart almost stopped when he saw what was going on. This might be the end of Charlotte if the boy succeeded in catching her. Stop it, Avery, cried Fern. Avery put one leg over the fence of the pig pen. He was just about to raise his stick to hit Charlotte when he lost his balance. He swayed and toppled and landed on the edge of Wilbur's trough. The trough tipped up and then came down with a slap. The goose egg was right underneath. There was a dull explosion as the egg broke, and then a horrible smell. Fern screamed. Avery jumped to his feet. The air was filled with the terrible gases and smells from the rotten egg. Templeton, who had been resting in his home, scuttled away into the barn. Good night, screamed Avery. Good night. Night, what a stink. Let's get out of here. Fern was crying. She held her nose and ran towards the house. Avery ran after her, holding his nose. Charlotte felt greatly relieved to see him go. It had been a narrow escape. Later on that morning, the animals came up from the pasture. The sheep, the lambs, the gander, the goose, and the seven, the seven goslings. There were many complaints about the awful smell, and Wilbur had to tell the story over and over again and how how, of how the horrible boy had tried to capture Charlotte and how the smell of the broken egg drove him away just in time. It was that rotten goose egg that saved Charlotte's, Charlotte's life, said Wilbur. There's another picture if you'd like to see. The goose was proud of her share in the adventure. I am delighted that the egg never hatched, she gabbled. Templeton, of course, was miserable over the loss of his beloved egg, but he couldn't resist boasting. It pays to save things, he said in his surly voice. A rat never knows when something is going to come in handy. I never throw anything away. Well, said one of the lambs, this whole business is all well and good for Charlotte. But what about the rest of us? The smell is unbearable. Who wants to live in a barn that is perfumed with rotten egg? Don't worry, you'll get used to it, said Templeton. He sat up and pulled wisely at his long whiskers, then crept away to pay a visit to the dump. When Lurby showed up at lunchtime carrying a pail of food for Wilbur, he stopped short a few paces from the pig pen. He sniffed the air and made a face. What in thunder, he said. Setting the pail down, he picked up the stick that Avery had dropped and picked the pried the trough up. Rats, he said. Phew! I might have known a rat would make a nest under his trough. How I hate a rat. And Lurvy dragged Wilbur's trough across the yard and kicked some dirt into the rat's nest, burying the broken egg and all Templeton's other possessions. Then he picked up the pail. Wilbur stood in the trough, drooling with hunger. Lurvy poured. The slops ran creamily down around the pig's eyes and ears. Wilbur grunted. He gulped and sucked and sucked and gulped, making swishing and swishing noises, anxious to get everything at once. 
It was a delicious meal. Skim milk, wheat middings, middlings, leftover pancakes, half a donut, the rind of a summer squash, two pieces of stale toast, a third of a ginger snap, a fish tail, one orange peel, several noodles from a noodle soup, the scum of a cup of cola, and, or of cocoa, sorry, an ancient jelly roll, a strip of paper from the lining of the garbage pail, and a spoonful of raspberry jello. <laughs> I just love the image of him standing in the trough and getting all the slops poured on top of him. It's just lovely. Wilbur ate heartily. He planned to leave half a noodle and a few drops of milk for Templeton. Then he remembered that the rat had been useful in saving Charlotte's life, and that Charlotte was trying to save his life. So he left a whole noodle instead of a half. Now that the broken egg was buried, the air cleared and the barn smelled good again. The afternoon passed and evening came. Shadows lengthened. The cool and kindly breath of evening entered through doors and windows. Astride her web, Charlotte sat moodily, eating a horsefly and thinking about the future. After, sh after a while, she bestirred herself. She descended to the corner of the web and there she began to cut some of her lines. She worked slowly but steadily while the other creatures drowsed. None of the others, not even the goose, noticed what she was at work. Deep in his soft bed, Wilbur snoozed. Over in their favorite corner, the goslings whistled a night song. Charlotte tore quite a sec oh, Charlotte tore quite a section out of her web, leaving an open space in the middle. Then she started weaving something to take the place of the thread she had moved. When Templeton got back from the dump, around midnight, the spider was still at work. Okay, chapter 11, The Miracle. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. On foggy mornings, Charlotte's web was truly a thing of beauty. This morning, each thin strand was decorated with dozens of tiny beads of water. The web glistened in the light and made a pattern of loveliness and mystery, like a delicate veil. Even Lurvy, who wasn't particularly interested in beauty, noticed the web when he came in with the pig's breakfast. He noted how clearly it showed up, and he noted how big and carefully built it was. And then he took another look, and he saw something that made him set his pail down. There, in the middle of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message. It said, Some pig. Lurvy felt weak. He brushed his hand across his eyes and stared harder at Charlotte's web. I'm seeing things, he whispered. He dropped to his knees and uttered a short prayer. Then, forgetting about Wilbur's breakfast, he walked back to the house and called Mr. Zuckerman. I think you better come down to the pig pen, he said. What's the trouble? asked Mr. Zuckerman. Anything wrong with the pig? N not exactly, said Lurvy. Come and see for yourself. Here's a picture of the web. Some pig. <laughs> the two men walked silently down to Wilbur's yard. Lurvy pointed to the spider's web. Do, do you see what I see? he asked. Zuckerman stared at the writing on the web. Then he murmured the words, Some pig. Then he looked at Lurvy. Then they both began to tremble. Charlotte, sleepy after his night's, her night's excursions, smiled as she watched. Wilbur came and stood directly under the web. Some pig, muttered Lurvy in a low voice. Some pig, whispered Mr. Zuckerman. They stared and stared for a long time at Wilbur. Then they stared at Charlotte. You don't suppose that, that spider, began Mr. Zuckerman, but he shook his head and didn't finish the sentence. Instead, he walked solemnly back up to the house and spoke with his wife. Edith, something has happened, he said in a weak voice. He went into the living room and sat down, and Mrs. Zuckerman followed. I've got something to tell you, Edith, he said. You better sit down. Mrs. Zuckerman sank into a chair. She looked pale and frightened. Edith, he said, trying to keep his voice steady. 
I think you had best be told that we have a very unusual pig. <laughs> a look of complete bewilderment came over Mrs. Zuckerman's face. Homer Zuckerman, what in the world are you talking about? She said. This is a very serious thing, Edith, he replied. Our pig is completely out of the ordinary. What's unusual about the pig? asked Mrs. Zuckerman, who was beginning to recover from her scare. Well, I don't really know yet, said Mrs. Zuckerman. But we have received a sign, Edith. A mysterious sign. A miracle has happened on this farm. There's a large spiderweb in the doorway of the barn cellar, right over the pig pen. And when Lurvy went to feed the pig this morning, he noticed the web because of it, it was foggy, and you know how a spider web looks, but very distinct in a fog. And right spang in the middle of the web, there were the words, Some pig. The words were woven right into the web. They were actually part of the web, Edith. I know, because I've been down there and I've seen them. It says, Some pig, just as clear as can be. There can be no mistake about it. A miracle has happened, and a sign has occurred here on earth, right on our farm, then we have no ordinary pig. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, it seems to me you're a little off. It seems we have no ordinary spider. Oh no, said Zuckerman, it's the pig that's unusual. It says so, right in the middle of the web. Maybe so, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Just the same, I intend to have a look at that spider. It's just a common gray spider, said Zuckerman. They got up, and together they walked down to Wilbur's yard. You see, Edith, it's just a common gray spider. Wilbur was pleased to receive so much attention. Lurvy was still standing there, and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, all three, stood for about an hour, reading the words on the web over and over, and watching Wilbur. Charlotte was delighted with the, tra with the way her trick was working. She sat without moving a muscle and listened to the conversation of the people. When a small fly blundered into the web, just beyond the word pig, Charlotte dropped down quickly, rolled the fly up, and carried it out of the way. After a while, the fog lifted. The web dried off, and the words didn't show up so plainly. The Zuckermans and Lurvy walked back to the house. Just before they left the pig pen, Mr. Zuckerman took one last look at Wilbur. You know, he said in an important voice, I've thought all along that this pig of ours was an extra good one. He's a solid pig. That pig is as solid as they come. You notice how solid he is around the shoulders, Lurvy? Sure. Sure I do, said Lurvy. I've always noticed that pig. He's quite a pig. He's long and he's smooth, said Zuckerman. That's right, agreed Lurvy. He's as smooth as they come. He's some pig. <laughs> when Mr. Zuckerman got back to the house, he took off his work clothes and put on his best suit. Then he got into his car and drove to the minister's house. He stayed for an hour and explained to the minister that a miracle had happened on the farm. So far, said Zuckerman, only four people on earth know about this miracle. Myself, my wife Edith, my hired man Lurvy, and you. Don't tell anybody else, said the minister. We don't know what it means yet, but perhaps if I give thought to it, I can explain it in my sermon next Sunday. There can be no doubt that you have a most unusual pig. I intend to speak about it in my sermon and point out the fact that this community has been visited with by a wonderful or a wondrous animal. By the way, does the pig have a name? Why, yes, said Mr. Zuckerman. My little niece calls him Wilbur. She's a rather queer child, full of notions. She raised the pig on a bottle, and I bought it from her when he was a month old. He shook hands with the minister and left. Secrets are hard to keep. Long before Sunday came, the news spread all over the country, or county. <laughs> Everybody knew that a sign had appeared in a spider's web on the Zuckerman place. Everybody knew that the Zuckermans had a wondrous pig. People came from miles around to look at Wilbur and to read the words on Charlotte's web. The Zuckerman's driveway was full of cars and trucks from morning till night. Fords and Chevys and Buick Roadmasters and GMC pickups and Plymouths and Studebakers and...
Oldsmobiles with rocket engines and Jeep station wagons and Pontiacs. The news of the wonderful pigs spread clear up to the hills and the farmers came rattling down in buggies and buckboards to stand an hour after hour at Wilbur's Pen, admiring the miraculous animal. All said they had never seen such a pig before in their lives. When Fern told her mother that Avery had tried to hit the Zuckerman spider with a stick, Mrs. Arable was so shocked that she sent every Avery to bed without any supper as punishment. In the days that followed, Mr. Zuckerman was so busy entertaining visitors that he neglected his farm work. He wore his good clothes all the time now, got right into them when he got up in the morning. Mrs. Zuckerman prepared special meals for Wilbur. Lurby, Lurby shaved and got a haircut, and his principal farm duty was to feed the pig while people looked on. Mr. Zuckerman ordered Lurby to increase Wilbur's feedings from three meals a day to four meals a day. The Zuckermans were so busy with visitors, they forgot about other things on the farm. The blackberries got ripe, and Mrs. Zuckerman failed to put up any blackberry jam. The corn needed a hoeing, and Lurvy didn't find time to hoe it. On Sunday, the church was full. The minister explained the miracle. He said the words on the spider's web proved that human beings must always be on watch for the coming of wonders. All in all, the Zuckerman's pig pen was at the center of attention. Fern was happy, for she felt that Charlotte's trick was working and that Wilbur's life would be saved. But she found that the barn was not nearly as pleasant. Too many people. She liked it better when she could be alone with her friends and the animals. Chapter 12, A Meeting. One evening, a few days after the writing had appeared on Charlotte's web, the spider called a meeting of the, uh, of the animals in the barn cellar. I shall begin by calling the roll. Wilbur, here, said the pig. Gander, here, 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 said the gander. You sound like three ganders, shuddered, muttered Charlotte. Why can't you just say here? Why do you have to repeat everything? It's my idio, idio, idiosyncrasy, replied the gander. Goose, here, 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 said the goose. Charlotte glared at her. Some people just have personalities that you can't deal with. Goslings, one through seven. Bee, 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 <laughs> said the goslings. This is getting to be quite a meeting, said Charlotte. Anybody would think we had three ganders, three geese, and 21 goslings. Sheep? Yeah, said all the sheep together. Lambs? Yeah, answered all the lambs together. Templeton? No answer. Templeton? No answer. Well, we are all here except the rat, said Charlotte. I guess we can proceed without him. Now, all of you must have noticed what's going on around here the last few days. The message I wrote in my web praising Wilbur has been received. The Zuckermans have fallen for it, and so has everybody else. Zuckerman thinks Wilbur is an unusual pig, and therefore he won't want to kill him and eat him. I dare say my trick will work, and Wilbur's life can be saved. Hooray! cried everybody. Thank you very much, said Charlotte. Now, I called this meeting in order to get suggestions. I need new ideas for the web. People are already getting sick of reading the word, some pig. If anybody can think of another message or remark, I will be glad to weave it into the web. Any suggestions for a new slogan? How about Pig Supreme? asked one of the lambs. No good said Charlotte. It sounds like a rich dessert. How about terrific, 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 asked the goose. Cut that down to one terrific and it will do very nicely, said Charlotte. I think terrific might impress Zuckerman. But Charlotte, said Wilbur, I'm not terrific. That doesn't make a, part a particle of difference, replied Charlotte. Not a particle. People believe almost anything they see in print. Does anybody here know how to spell terrific? I think, said the gander. It's T double E double R double R double I double F double I double C C C C C. What kind of acrobat do you think I am? said Charlotte in disgust. I would have to, I would have to have St. Vitus's dance to weave to weave a word like that into my web. Sorry, 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 said the gander. 
Then the old sheep spoke up. I agree that there should be something new written in the web if Wilbur's life is to be saved. And if Charlotte needs help finding the words, I think she can get it from our friend Templeton. The rat visits the dump regularly and has access to old magazines. He can tear out bits of advertisements and bring them up here to the barn cellar so that Charlotte can have something to copy. Good idea, said Charlotte, but I'm not sure Templeton will be willing to help. You know how he is, always looking out for himself, never thinking of the other fellow. I bet I can get him to help, said the old sheep. I'll appeal to his baser instincts, of which he has plenty. Here he comes now. Everybody keep quiet while I put the matter up to him. The rat entered the barn the way he always did, creeping along close to the wall. What's up? he asked, seeing the animals assembled. We're holding a director's meeting, replied the old sheep. Well, break it up, said Templeton. Meetings bore me and the rat began to climb a rope that hung against the wall. Look, said the old sheep, next time you go to the dump, Templeton, bring back a clipping from a magazine. Charlotte needs new ideas so she can write messages in her web and save Wilbur's life. Let him die, said the rat. I should worry. <laughs> You'll worry all right when the next winter comes, said the sheep. You'll worry all not all right on a zero mor oh, ooh. You'll worry all right on a zero morning next January when Wilbur is dead and nobody comes here with a nice pail of warm sops to pour into the trough. Wilbur Wilbur's leftover food is your chief source of supply, Templeton. You know that. Wilbur's food is your food. Therefore, Wilbur's destiny and your destiny are closely linked. If Wilbur is killed and his trough stands empty day after day, you'll grow so thin we can look right through your stomach and see the objects on the other side. Templeton's whisk whiskers quivered. Maybe you're right, he said gruffly. I'm making a trip to the dump tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Thanks, said Charlotte. The meeting is now adjourned. I have a busy evening ahead of me. I've got to tear my web apart and write terrific. Wilbur blushed. But I'm not terrific, Charlotte. I'm just about average for a pig. You're terrific as far as I'm concerned, replied Charlotte sweetly. And that's what counts. You're my best friend, and I think you're sensational. Now stop arguing and get some sleep. All right, we will stop there for today. That was pretty interesting. I'm kind of surprised the sheep was not a jerk today. So that's a good thing. Um, I guess we will continue as soon as we can. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, do what you do, if you so choose. And I will see you again real soon. Bye.